7 o'clock. Let's call this meeting to order and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, since it's only us uh, staff and board, I'm going to Leave out all the rest of the stuff. We'll move right to uh, approval of the minutes from last meeting. I have a motion for approval. Moved by Adrian, seconded by Sorry. Doug. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, okay. I will abstain. Abstain. Well, we can allow you to do that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, skip ahead. Let's get the LOCs out of the way. Uh, everything's good on LOCs, lock stuff, you know. Yeah. Sign sealed and delivered. Finally got the right amount. Got the right amount in there. Okay. So uh, do I have a motion to waive the reading of those two letters of credit, which, by the way, were approved by the town board last night, pending our approval? Uh, do I have a motion to waive the reading and approve those two letters of credit? Motion by Sam. Kim. Aye. Adrian. Adrian. Any other comments? Do um, you like long meetings? What the hell? <laughs> Do we want a, do, do we have to do a roll call on that one? No. no. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Let's get into secret training. Ron. Okay. Uh, this is the second part of the um, updates on the secret. Uh, as a result of the court decision, I'm not going to be discussing anything that you haven't already read. In the decision rendered before. Mm -hmm. Principal reason I'm not going to do that is we have pending litigation. Right. Okay. But I will talk generically a little bit about secret and hopefully give you some insights into things that perhaps will help uh, you as you go forward. Now, First thing I want to point out is that Seeker is two parts. It's procedural, which when it first came out was about 95% of all the legal challenges that were made because people were still learning to understand what a classification was and what a part one was and a part two and what they had to look at and all that good stuff. But the second part is substantive. And 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 the law today mandates that agencies act on substantive information. So it's not information that is brought forth as a result of emotions or fears or things jumping out of the closet, okay? It's, it's, it's produced by the facts uh, that are presented to you. So, I have to say that you did a good job with the previous litigation. You always do a good job. You listen very carefully to what's being said. And sometimes you can pick up the fears, if you will, from the facts. So this often results in project modifications and can lead to project denial if, if the adverse environmental impacts cannot be favorably balanced against social and economic considerations and adequate mitigation measures. Point I want to make here is secret is not a stopgap uh, procedure. It's not intended to stall or deny projects. Its intent is to get you to think about the impacts of those criteria that the state have said are important for you to weigh in your evaluation. And the, the secret form itself is far from probably the best thing since sliced bread, but it is what we have to deal with. And, and when you have a secret form that says no or low impact and you can't distinguish between the two, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to deal with. This board, unlike the Zoning Board of Appeals, where the majority of their actions were type two actions, deals with probably the majority of your actions, being the most. 
and as a result of being arrested. What does that mean? Well, it means <coughs> it's not spelled out in the type one category, nor is it spelled out in the type two. It's out in a gray area, and therefore it's on listed action. What it requires you to do is to prepare a short environmental assessment form, parts one and two, to make your your classification and to make your determination of significance. Now, type two actions, we've talked about unlisted actions, we've talked about, and, and the thing that I want to point out to you is you are required under seeker to classify the action within 20 calendar days of your receipt of the application. Now, your receipt of the application is not when Dan sends the email or when he, you pick up your packets. Your receipt is when you meet as a board to receive the application. Normally, at those meetings, you will have a draft resolution for classifying the secret. I can't think of maybe the one that maybe there is something out there, but I can't. Think of it. So you're not um, violating the seeker by following that procedure. Secondly, um, the words determination or determining the significance of are not defined in, in the seeker regulations. They're not there. That phrase has been interpreted, however, to mean that the classification of the action. So I have started, as a result of all this, changing the wording in those resolutions, classifying it as a type unlisted action or type one or whatever. And the determination of significance is a different matter under seeking. The board um, that deals with this action um, is the obligation to determine whether it's something significant. Now, with, with an unlisted action, you can treat it just like you would a type one and ask for a coordinated review. We've done that, okay? We've had some unlisted actions, didn't fall into the threshold of type one, but yet there were enough concerns about maybe a state highway or county highway or something about wetlands or something of that nature that we wanted to get the involved agencies uh, into the process early on so that we didn't end up, like I've seen some municipalities over the year, going through the process, granting our preliminary approval only a few months later to have an agency come back and say, well, you need this permit, you need that permit, and therefore, you know, you shouldn't have issued the, the preliminary approvals. The, uh, process that is involved with making a determination of significance for an unlisted action is basically the same as for type one action. Let me just stop here and point out that one of the fallacies that exists is that attorneys like to interpret the class one actions, the type one action, excuse me, as being an action that mandates the preparation of an environmental impact statement. It does not, okay? You should try every avenue possible to find mitigation to avoid going through the process of an environmental impact statement. I've gone through a lot of environmental impact statements over the years. Probably one of the first ones I had was over here at Eastview Mall when they built that way back in the, in the dark ages. The, the outcome of that still identified issues of concern and they identified the mitigation of those issues to the extent practical. That didn't give justification to denying the application. So keep that in mind. You can go through the 
full environmental impact process, public hearings, making your separate findings and conclusions and come out basically at the same point, only six or months or a year later, after a lot of legal expenses have been eaten up with a determination that would have been the same had you done it uh, in the beginning. The process also uh, is right for Article 78 because interpreting your findings, interpreting your conclusions on these matters, whether it was impact on agriculture, impact on traffic, drainage, wetlands, all of these things are all subjective things that attorneys like to take and go to court on. And, and fortunately for us, we had a very good judge that had a lot of land use background. A lot of the judges don't have that. And that makes it very difficult. Okay. But in our instance, where we have had uh, nine points all found in our favor, not one, okay, uh, that we were found not to be in compliant with, uh, I believe is a very good sound standing for this appeal if it does materialize. The appeal can take up to six months. We'll have to wait to see where it goes from there. But we have done everything that we can to inform you of the impacts, whether it was the impacts of the fire department and the leakage of, of materials from a solar panel, or whether it was impacts on visual or impacts on uh, agriculture. We, we thought we did a very thorough job. I cannot uh, overemphasize the importance of John's abstracts. Okay. Uh, that is something that you've been blessed with. And I hope you understand that you, you really need, you've set the bar and you really need to keep the bar there uh, in the future when you go forward. So, in a very quick summary of, of all of this, and I know you've heard it probably a thousand times, is there any question you have about how the secret process should or doesn't work in, in dealing with it all? I find it interesting, I might add, that when they amended the secret regulations here in 2019, this before COVID, they put a lot of emphasis on solar um, actions and <clears throat> basically <clears throat> open up or grease the skids, if you will, for a lot of solar actions that fell into the type two or unlisted categories that weren't cured for. And that's typical of what happens when you have an administration at a higher level, pushing something forward as their agenda. <clears throat> okay, if there's a if there's a bump in the road, they, they take that bump out of the road. And this is the way they did it. So we'll get to questions in a minute. I always want to make a few comments on the training as well. First off, I want everyone to understand, and certainly we've been through this, but we are blessed to have a staff who helps us, guides us, and provides us a lot of information. It's not the case in other municipalities. But we are blessed to have the staff that we have. That being said, Seeker is our, the board's responsibility. We are the ones that do the votes. <laughs> We're the ones that do that. So as good as staff is and what they provide us on our resolution, Specifically, as it relates to speaker, we're the ones that are putting our votes on that, and we're the ones that are putting our seal and stamp on that. So it's really important that we take speaker very seriously. 
And I think it has shown that we have in the past because we've gotten through some litigation issues. Um, on the other hand, too, we have to keep the public as focused as we can on facts. If you go back to a recent <coughs> um, application, it was very challenging to keep the focus on facts as it relate to Seeker. Because we do Seeker first. And so you might have two years worth of Seeker before you actually approve it. And you have to keep the public focused on facts that affect the Seeker as opposed to just emotion and, you know, we don't want it, so you need to vote it down kind of thing. So it's really important that we do that. And most importantly is consistency. We have procedures. We follow them consistently. We treat every application fairly. We try to keep the same procedures in place for everything. And that is to our benefit when it comes to litigation. And that we have done this. We followed the rules, we followed the procedure, we've done all the right things and we've kept everything focused. So uh, before, okay, now we can ask, ask you know, Ron any questions, but I wanted you to know that we've been through this and uh, probably we've had more experience at Seeker than most other municipalities because of what we've been doing. Ron. And just to, to back you up on what you just said, Ed, the, um, Notice of appeal here from the, uh, the, the the petitioners isn't against Dan Del Fiore or Ron Brand or Lance Briga. It's against the town of Farmington and the town of Farmington Planning Board. Correct. Okay. So, as much as you don't understand what we're telling you, don't hesitate to ask for clarification exactly. because the final analysis is. What you do is what is okay. Yep. Okay. I I talked long enough. I'm getting towards questions. So so questions here. to Ron on Seeker, and certainly you can ask questions to staff anytime on Seeker. Yeah. Not not necessarily okay. a question, but a comment. Um, I think it's important that you know, Ron, you mentioned going to other agencies for evaluation, and I think that's important. My understanding is that's important because sometimes that augments our expertise or the staff's expertise right. in terms of providing information that we require to um, make decisions on. So that's what I gain from reading materials as well. Yes, yeah, certainly. Certainly when DC has no comments on an application, <laughs> that sends you know, a whole bunch of information our way just by not saying it. <laughs> yeah, well, just because EEC right. comes doesn't. back, doesn't object to your being the lead agent, right. doesn't have any comments, doesn't mean that they're going to accept his MS4. Oh, absolutely. Was, okay. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, that's the fallacy of this yep. that we have to have to be aware of. And, and you may remember that in some of the more recent matters that there was concern about, well, if we don't have a final stormwater uh, <coughs> plan in place, or we don't have this, or we don't have that. Well, we're just at preliminary. Okay. Right, right. Yep. Any other questions? Well, I have no questions. <laughs> but is it possible? I've seen a lot of type ones. Is it possible to get a copy of one or two type ones? So I can just take a look at that and read it and compare and see what I'm see what I'm looking at differently. Sure. <laughs> sure. You, you should get the Delaware River type one. I mean that would be a good one for me to look at to see. Uh, just I mean that was the one we spent almost two years in public hearings on. Uh, yeah. You know, and certainly was an interesting one for, for us, for sure. You know, just, just to make a comparison for you, Aaron, 
Um, the one he just mentioned, there was another type one action right over here on Collette Road. You know, 750,000 square foot warehouse for the type one action. Went through the whole process. No, nobody, absolutely nobody yeah. had any complaints. Okay, so you you have to kind of sense what's going on and, and be prepared, you know, for the worst scenario. We this is this latest one isn't the only one that this board has had. Sure. They had one earlier in the process with Auburn Meadows. They said we didn't have the right to record sidewalks. Right. Okay. And, and Clearly, we did. So, you know, just because there was an incentive zoning provision that identified a certain length of sidewalk as part of the incentive zoning <coughs> package didn't take away your rights under the town code to record sidewalks. Yeah, I think you can give a staff, they can show you some of the recent ones. Um, that one, but like I said, that's the one I would pull out. Okay. Okay. Just challenge. Okay. Anything else? No, nope, I don't. Next item up: rules of procedure. Ron gave us a copy, and I may have them make a copy. He made some recommended changes, um, comments, notes. I didn't have a problem with any of them, really. I mean, it's getting lengthy, but at the same time. Well, can I just go ahead? Just say right this. Yep. Because of everything else going on around here, I didn't get to this until today, and and I apologize for giving you something at the eleventh hour for you to look at. But I didn't anticipate that you do anything with this other than just to receive it, take it home, and start <coughs> studying and thinking about it. Okay, um, there is things in here that that we now have affecting us. Like with Zoom and yeah, everything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I just want to on here. I mean, I've also just received it, and there's some of these recommendations and comments are great, but there's stuff missing about yeah. there's holes in it. Yeah. So Dates and I can yeah. answer some of that. I just haven't had an opportunity okay. to. Well, let's just take it and review it and bring it back. Um, my review today said that uh, item I there on page was four or whatever. Four. Yeah, I'm not sure why we would change and put a period of what's the max period of months to continue a public hearing. I mean, if that's what we need in there, we can put it in there. I wouldn't do it personally because that ties our, I don't like to tie our hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it's been something that we have seen in different yep. applications. And I <coughs> use the opportunity to identify it, bring it up, and discuss yep. it so yep. that you know what you want to do with it. All right, we'll take these and uh, review them for our next meeting. Um, and can I just make one? Go ahead, go ahead. On that same page, page four, yep. e, where it says, um, those participating online, you might want to use remotely or virtually because don't we allow people to phone in as well? Yeah. So online that, that to me is specific to the uh, computer connection versus okay. the phone. That, right? That's great. I mean, I mean, that's one of the things that jumped out of me. Yeah. Um, I would recommend that if you guys have comments, give them to the chairman. And yeah. Can, like, yeah. Send me your we'll comments on that. We'll, All right. we'll, I'll do that. Okay. Um, after you do your review. Yeah. And there was also a provision in there that talked about you couldn't vote on something if you didn't participate in the meeting. And that didn't take into consideration you being able to remotely participate in the meeting. Well, and or review the yeah. minutes and or review the it, recordings and a lot of things in there yeah. you may find that I was out in left field on other things maybe we do need it. Well, and there are always good talking points anyway. So. Uh, on to the overlay districts, uh, MTOD and MSOD. I glanced at them and honestly, I couldn't see any major changes 
or any changes to them. But again, that's not my technical area of expertise in 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 what you know version of trees and plant material and those kind of things. I would assume that Lance has taken a look at those and made any I'm going to make any recommended changes to those. But overall, I didn't see anything there that stuck out at me. So yeah, I've been. I'll, I know staff will be looking in them thoroughly as well, just to make sure. Um, and and it's at this possible time, some of those do change, Lance. I mean, maybe there are some trees that we don't want anymore, and trees that we do want. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, well, the speed, the species, most certainly are something we can take a look at. Um, I know we've been looking at the light fixtures uh, because our our MSOD areas does have the possibility of having lights located in the street and the state right away. And the state has came back to the town and said, if we're going to put light fixtures in there, they have to be breakaway. Took us a while to find a spec. We finally found a spec. So we're going to be updating the, the site design criteria with our light fixture that we've already had, have in there, but with a spec so that it shows that it can be a breakaway light fixture. So those type of things will trickle down from the site design back into the MSOD, but we also can take a look at the, the species um, and the type of landscaping that we've we've suggested in that, most certainly. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think they look pretty good. So, I was going to say, I, I hadn't realized that MSOD was now part of this along with the MTOD. So I, that, that was something that was, I saw it, tonight that I hadn't even gone through that since we just- I you did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Again, if you come across something in the next week or two here, yeah. please email that and get it over to us. And Okay, so we're not going to do this tonight. No, we're not going to do this. Okay. You think you have a question? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I got, and I guess the other question I have is some of these things we discussed, and I think Dan, you mentioned maybe like, for example, the landscape agents. I mean, it, is this either the MTOD or MSOD where we should be addressing something like that? Or is that more of something <coughs> that should be a code condition condition? Talking about landscape maintenance. Landscape maintenance on. Well, you have projects that are outside of these districts too that we require landscaping. Um, so that's a great question of where that should be um, or how we enforce it. I mean, it seems to always be a condition on your guys' resolutions that you want landscaping, which staff has always graciously have put those on the draft resolutions, but nothing says in what we're running into with a bunch of places are, yeah, they put them in, they die in a few years, but they follow what was recommended by this board, but nothing says of maintaining that if something dies, they have to replace it in like kind or something to that effect. And from an enforcement standpoint, that's very difficult. Well, one of the documents says a note should be in there about maintenance and replacement. And I put in there, it should be an agreement, not a note. There should be some type of an agreement of maintenance and replacement of which is fine, but where does that agreement go with? Does it go with the property? Because if they sell it and a new tenant comes in or something, yeah. they have to be aware of that. That's a requirement. So sure. Okay. Maybe okay. I'm sorry, maybe we could treat it if that is the direction the town wants to go, maybe maybe we could treat it like a stormwater maintenance agreement one where the town has adopted a form a policy that says, here's what you're obligated to do for the lifetime of the pond. And if you fail to meet this criteria, this is what the town will do. Maybe there's a way the town can adopt a form like that, that gets signed and accepted by the town. And then it gets filed with the property. Um, that way there's record of some acknowledgement. Yeah. If we do something like that, I would prefer the site design criteria that's affected throughout the entire town and not locked into these overlay districts. Okay. That's kind of what I was asking. And what gives you more teeth? I yeah. 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 Right. If it's in the code or, or, or in the design criteria, you know, and that's where people would go to first. They may not get to the MTOD or MSOD yeah. or really even realize that their property is, is within that district. Um, so that's why I just wanted to some guy, I mean, we could include it here, but then I didn't want to put it here and then have a copy of something else down the road. So I just, 
but it's kind of no. I, I think that you guys are on the right path. I've also heard this from the town board that they are frustrated with that because these businesses come in, they build, and it looks great for the first few years, and then yeah, sure, it's ongoing maintenance really, yeah. you know, especially after our maintenance bond expires, yeah, which is usually two years, yeah, and then they think they don't care. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's whatever <clears throat> staff recommends. If putting them in these two locations quickly addresses some of our issues, then I don't have a problem putting them in there. I think the long-term solution is what Lance recommended, having a landscape maintenance agreement similar to the uh, stormwater maintenance agreement yeah. and go from there. So I think that's a good long-term, but I'm convinced that maybe a short-term might be to upgrade these to include that. And then with the agreement issue, then maybe we can pull them on later if we don't need I, I do have a question about the documents, however. There are two. Yeah. One is MTOD specifically, and the other is MTOD slash MSOD. MSOD. Yeah. MSOD. Are we going to have two documents or just the one? That includes no. both? And one is Streetscape and one is MTOD, site design. Streetscape and site design. I think they are separate. Because I think isn't MTOD a larger area and MSOD is yeah, a yeah, yeah, oldest sure. area? Okay. MSOD is only really 96. But you have to remember, thank you. MSOD is within the MTOD. Correct. Okay. So some of the documents have to state that, but it is truly a different document than the MTOD. For instance, MTOD goes all the way down, or tends all the way to Palette, whereas MSOD doesn't go down. All right, and then um, the um, Town of Farmington Comprehensive Plan is its reference 2011. Is that going to be accepted before we actually finish this document, or do we stay with the 11? We we look. I don't know what your deadline is for these regulations. The code, the comprehensive plan is looking at the January 25th. Yeah. I, okay. Our goal here is whenever everybody's comfortable with them and if they've provided their input and everybody's computer, <coughs> then we'll go from that. It takes next meeting or it's three, four meetings after that, whatever it takes to get what we want done. Are okay. we going to have another one where we said discuss these like we have in the past, or is this more just yes. get the comments to you and then get the comments to me? We'll update that and have a discussion, have the discussion okay. meeting. So probably at our organizational meeting in January. Okay. Oh, that's my question, <laughs> which I haven't set up yet. Uh, I, I have these on for other board actions at the next regular planning board meeting, unless you direct me to put them on. What's on our next meeting? Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. It's yeah. like, well, by the applications, like, I at the end of that, we're not going to want to talk so, about this. So. Yeah. <laughs> Like, but if there's one application, I'll be perfectly honest there to Disney right now. Um, when she gets back, Ron, her, John, myself, we'll all sit down. And there's applications that all came in. We have to plan those out, what meeting they're going to hit in January. So I don't have a good answer. I know there's projects on both meetings. So we'll probably just do these at our uh, organizational meeting in January. Probably towards the middle end of January, give ourselves a chance to okay. do it. We do. Or we least, usually do it or at least not the first Saturday. Saturday. No, not the first Saturday. We can make that decision later. Okay. So, do you not want me to put them under other board discussion then? You can throw them on there, but chances are we won't go over until the organization. Okay. Okay. Any other comments on that before we move on to open discussion? You have another Myers. Yeah. Oh, Myers, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Fill us in on Myers. All right. Uh, sidewalks all the way. They were working on uh, fencing the back of the property. So that's going to take them into next week. They're trying to get as much of that done. For the building side, they were pouring the inside slabs. Uh, I think they were pouring the <coughs> inside so the building coming along it's pretty much all sealed up it's up to the front where the windows are so things are moving along they are doing an insulation in most of it inside uh, because when they do those steel that's put in at the same time 
Uh, the transformer was placed. Now they're waiting for their electrician to come back and run the wires that need to be ran, and then RD and E can energize the transformer, which should turn on our street lights at that point. But wasn't that soon they were saying? At well, or something? They, they did say it was going to be soon, but it's one of those that RD can come in and set the transformer, but then their electricians had to come back and run the wires to the transformer and hook it all into the transformer, and then our GE comes back after that's been inspected and generates. So I don't quite know where we're at. I do know the first step was done. I don't know if the electricians have been back to run the wires. They were supposed to be this week, and then we're back in our GE's hands of when they come and actually turn on the power. Hey, now I, I read in the PRC notes that um, there was something about trash. And Back of their lot with um, yep. embellished. <coughs> so, what's going on yeah, absolutely. Um, they, when they put the pond in, they went around and up to the manufacturing home park there, there was a lot of trash. And so they went through and cleaned up even stuff that wasn't on their property. While that was all piled up and it was in a spot that they couldn't really get to. Uh, but now that they've moved some piles, they could get that trash and they were going to get disposed of it correctly. So they're going to do it and not the mobile home park? Correct. Okay. It wasn't clear. All right. Yep. No, they, they said they were going to take the responsibility. It actually helps them uh, more than probably mobile home park, the manufacturer's home park, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, Ron, open discussion. Just two quick things. So number one, I'll send Marcy a copy of in tomorrow an email saying you completed your one hour training on the secret stuff. Number two, uh, if you read the PRC minutes for the last meeting, you might have noticed that Mr. LaFroy mentioned something about a mixed use building having some light industrial uses in it. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Dan and John, you know, is there anything in the GP district that would allow for that? And, and they got back to me and said, I have to take the seat. <clears throat> so we asked for a meeting, which we had last week with uh, Mr. LaFroy and company to talk about some of the ideas that they had of what they are calling light industrial types of uses. Make a long story short, um, what this has done is it's caused us to take a look at the intent of the GB district. And generally speaking, the general business district is the more all encompassing uh, district for commercial and business type operations. But when you start looking at the definitions of those two terms, business and commercial, you begin to see a different image. Okay. And instead of having the GB districts that we have, which are oriented to personal goods, uh, services, things of this nature, it's more encompassing. So I spent a good part of today preparing something and I sent it off to Dan and John to take a look at it to see if it makes any sense. And we'll be getting that together. The reason I'm bringing this out is twofold. Number one, it makes sense for us to take a look at these GB regulations that are 40 years old have changed. Okay. Number two, technology is advancing such that we need to be able to compete and be competitive to attract businesses here in, in the community. And the notion that a business can only be a fast food store or a drug store is, is you know, a thing of the past. I'd like to add something there and 
they they use the term flex space and that's more than just gb it's not necessarily commercial my comment to them was i don't mind the concept of flex space as long as it's not what i would consider dirty commercial yeah i mean we don't want a friggin welding you know thing in there where they're doing a bunch of outdoor welding but it, they did bring up something they and I found very interesting. Paychecks, when they send out an RFP for building space, they will not consider any building that doesn't have a loading deck. Even though they chances of them using it as slim to none, they're <coughs> only going to deliver paper there or whatever. But if the building isn't built with some loading docks, does it even doesn't check off the box and it's not even considered by patients. So things have changed in our world and I think our code needs to change a little bit to ensure that the people that own property in the GB district specifically are competitive in the world. So I thought those were things that came up to my mind. So when we had a meeting, I was at the meeting, I thought it was interesting, but we don't want to go to the point of having dirty industrial, what I call dirty industrial. But at the same time, if they're going to assemble some electronic parts in a small part of the building and they're just going to put together, you know, whatever, then I'm not going to have any problem with it. On the other hand, if they're going to take the whole building and make it this huge industrial or whatever, then that's probably not, doesn't fit into what we thought. So that was some of the thoughts. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I, and I know I'm not being very specific with you. I, I haven't even had a chance to discuss this any of this today with Dan or, or John to see if, it, if I'm going in the right direction. The last thing that, that I want to just mention to you is uh, last Thursday night, there was a open house over at Cobblestone Performing Arts Center. And Cobblestone has been blessed with having graduate students uh, in, at RIT uh, in the architecture department, prepare different sketch, sketches, ideas of what a community center would look like over there. Uh, and I can forward these photographs, I took a lot of them to you to take a look at. Uh, you'll find it interesting. You'll also find it to re reflect that not an awful lot of it is uh, compliant with the NTOD standards. <laughs> so I'm just telling you from, from the standpoint of the efforts that are underway there, uh, these students have done a great job. They've integrated different components into the community center, whether it's a library, uh, recreational facilities, <laughs> senior centers, things of this nature, and how they tied it together with the trail component and access. A lot of interesting thoughts there for you to get. So if, if you want, I'll send that information over to you. Just, just and you can have Sarah post them out on the, the, the link. And the link and then we can look at it that way, whichever. Okay, yeah. I, what, I, you'll have to show me how to do it. But, yeah. You know, uh, it was a very interesting. Good, cool. Evening. I'd love to see him. I will say this to those that don't know Lori Benson. I can say that you know when she makes up her mind she wants to do something, she usually does it. So I'm not saying that this is a fait accompli, but she has some very heavy hitters uh, involved here with this project. Okay, cool. We'll just see where it goes. Cool. Yeah. Before I go, Ron, do you want to talk about the solar wall? Oh, that was posted on the website today, dated uh, yesterday, the 14th. Uh, and the one thing that I do want to point out is I would like to be able to put some kind of additional amendment in there for this mixed use concept that we just talked about with commercial business and limited industrial 
trying to figure out a way of making it so that as this project continues to take off, we're not running into a wall everywhere. Okay. Well, the reason I get I'm talking about the solar wall is we are getting closer to the end of the moratorium. Yeah. And uh, we before we went in, well when we went into the moratorium, we did have a few projects that we're looking, and they do still call on a somewhat regular basis. So um, just so you guys are aware. When this law is adopted, I'm anticipating that we will at least get some applications back in front of you for solar. I'm sure of that. Um, Brian, you're good. I think I do want to talk about the meeting this week that we had over in the downline district there on 26. Yeah. Um, before I get to that, though, I, I just want to also comment. I went to that open house at Cobblestone and um, I was very impressed, but again, we have to look at some of these newer tech or newer styles of engineering of buildings because a lot of them were net zero buildings, uh, a lot of green infrastructure put into them. Uh, a lot of the roofs were like green roofs or had solar across the top of them. So um, Ron's absolutely right that this is great stuff, but We'll, we'll get to the pictures. Stuff that we really have to start considering when we're looking at our MTOD, and because these are graduates from RIT who, before we know it, will be submitting projects to municipalities. So, is there any way that we could get our MTOD and MSOD guidelines to some part of this group to review and make? Well, I will comments leave. that relate to where this type of thing is going. This was not that we wouldn't right. stop them all, but this is the, was their final project mm -hmm. uh, for this semester. But it might be something that we could talk to uh, Cobblestone about and see who they had contacts up there. And I just like they, to see some feedback from them on, you know, what type of things are we doing that or that we could include there as at least options that would give us a more green or a more whatever. Well, it would be interesting to see also what they're teaching. I yeah. mean, if they're teaching things and we don't even consider allowing them, well, then that's exactly. <laughs> I, 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 well, I don't necessarily <laughs> want to go off yeah. in the deep end either, believe me. But then I look right at Doug because I'm sure that he's seen some of this and heard some of this. That well, yeah, and not, and not even just RIT. I also work with Best Use students. Um, you know, I usually give them a couple of projects per year you know, when I, I have it work, or examples of them, and yeah. have them, you know, do, you know, their design on it basically, and come up with ideas. And sometimes it's really good. Other times, though, uh, and I've sat, I've sat through some of these, you know, their other presentations. Some some of the ideas are. Things I don't think we would really want to consider, or exactly. So I, I think it's but uh, feedback is always good because you can always ignore it. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, we, yeah. I think there was what five or six different presentations, yeah. and I agree with your comments. Some of those I was like, wow, and yeah. some of them I was like, yeah, okay, that doesn't really do it for me. But yeah, yeah, and so, yeah, it's it's you, you get a wide range. Of yeah, them. yeah, it's it's. Uh, so move, moving on uh, in regards to the project that Ron's talking about, we have um, a presentation for another subdivision of 325 homes coming in, um, access off of 96. It would be in our LI and um, S, R S, R S 25, thank you, 25 uh, zoning district. So they will be looking for a rezoning. Um, BME is the engineer on it. It's a couple of uh, developers out of Canandaigua um, that own this part of the Powers family um, that goes all the way down from Collette Road to 96. A couple of those strips in the Deep Police property um, over in there. Just past Creekwood, uh, the 96. 96. 
Huh? Uh, it's not, uh, what was that? You know where the apartments across from the racetrack yeah, is just a bit east of that. Fairdale? Yeah, Fairdale. There you go. I'm glad somebody could remember. So that's where that little barn is or wherever it is. Yeah, the back down there. Yeah, a little bit farther down. Yeah. yeah, and that goes all the way, like you said? Yeah, all close way. to it? Or no, all the like way to Clutter. You must back up to those other people that live there then, too. Well, yeah. So some where it's it's a, it's some kind of cut out. Yeah. So they came in and showed us a plan that was very, very dense. Uh, town staff gave them some recommendations and it was a good opportunity to talk through some stuff. Um, I, I don't think town board, if they go instead of zoning, would of course always go to you guys for recommendations. But again, I don't think they were real happy with 325 uh, lots in there. So more to come. Single family homes, you said? Single family homes. When you say dense, what does that mean? What's the size of the lot? How much? 90,000. Yeah. Small. Small, small lots. Yeah, that's like okay. half, not even half acre. Yeah, no, it's quarter acre. So, or less. Um, yeah. We, we gave them some thoughts. They took a lot of information back. I anticipate them to, they say they want people to not necessarily quickly. I anticipate them trying to meet with staff again after the first of the year and we'll see where it goes but if it does go in standard just so you guys are aware i mean tom board always looks to be a very good input on any of these projects and i'm sure they would want this again on this one would they talk about who their market is who they would sell to well uh they <laughs> said, well they said that they were going to be a ryan home house and i already say who's building the house so yeah and, and, and VR is who they would be selling to. Hey, Dan, this is Lance. I'm aware of the project. I just got a curiosity. They were proposing that small of a lot, but what size are they allowed per code in, that zone, in those two zoning districts? Well, that's the way they're going in incentive zoning. Yeah. Right. So, so they're requesting incentive zoning? Yeah. I thought you guys said you suggested it. No, no. They, no. they are proposing. Okay, I apologize for that. Sidewalks so, or the car wash? Okay, um, yeah, so <laughs> let me jump to the car wash. Um, sidewalks are going in this week for the car wash. Uh, we, we had some discussion at the PRC and uh, Ed was so gracious to join us. And uh, they See, want that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think all staff was very adamant that they were served. They were told, <laughs> told by staff multiple times, told by this board in your guys' special use permit for that plot. That <laughs> before you guys, before I could issue a CMO on the building, sidewalks had to be installed. It was a condition that was set forth by the planning board. So we gave them the options of waiting this spring to open the business and putting them in then. Figuring out how to put them in now with weather re related issues or coming back to the planning board um, to try to get you guys to change the resolution and the conditions that you set in the resolution. Because, uh, I mean, it was very clear the resolution what you said about site. Well, and like you said at PRC and the minutes that we, even when they first came to us, we said, you guys might want to start doing some work on this property now, as in cleaning up demo, whatever you're doing. Like, we're giving you, and I remember we gave them, said, well, what do they want to do? And I guess they dragged it up, whatever you want to call it, but they waited until everything was finally approved before they did anything. Well, and it's just like a couple other projects that we have in town, and Myers was one of them. I was like, wow, the sidewalk on Mackenzie, we don't want to put in right now. We'll put it in in the spring because. You know, we got to cut the driveway open, and, and I said, guys, you've been told. I mean, we had a housing seven and an eight that they had to get their sidewalks in before CMOs. We were telling them since August. They wanted and, to close last week, so then two weeks ago, they wanted they had a house to close on. And they dragged their feet on sidewalks, and every month at PRC, we said, guys, you got to get your sidewalks in, you got to get your sidewalks in. And then we're, here we are in December. Saying, I mean, you just got to stick to the guns, really. I mean, 
I'm glad they didn't come back. And if they did, they really just. I pretty much dissuaded them. I get it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what they would what we'd really say differently than where we were before, but it's kind of what I told you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so having the chairman at the PRC was very beneficial because he exactly said those comments on your behalf, saying that, you know what? You agreed to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the other part is you accepted it and agreed to it. Yeah. I mean, you know. And they grabbed me outside afterwards because I happened to walk out right after they left. And uh, it's a long story. But uh, yeah, I told them, hey, I can't tell you that I have the votes on the planning board to do any changes whatsoever. If you can't convince the town to come up with a way to give you a CFO without putting them in, which I don't think you can, you better just put the damn things in. What I basically told them in and almost those exact words. <laughs> and the other thing that we told them was it would have to be on your agenda, which I mean, we're in the process right now of trying to figure out January, but if somebody came to me today, they're not seeing you until February, just because of how yep. the submittals all work. So that I told them off the bat, just to come back and ask you guys to change it, you're out two months. And the likeness was probably going to be split. Especially you show up in February, March, and they just tell you to wait until April until the sidewalks right. right. have another right. month to give up. Right. But if you really want to be open in February, the beginning of February, or I don't know what their timeline is right now, but they, they are shooting for February to be open. So. It's, it's one of the busier months. I'm yeah. sure most of the busier are the year. So it looks like that would be taken. Aware of the warnings, or the times that we told them that they need to get out and they need to get the black up, they need to get the concrete in and get that stuff done before CMO. I think that became very apparent to them at the PRC meeting. Yeah, and I, I have to thank John for that because he gave me all the abstracts for the meeting and I was able to line up everything. So they could not. I mean, they were in a bad spot when they tried to present it to change. Well, and the important thing was is the actual owner was there and understood, I think, at some point what really happened. But that is where the owner Well, somebody <laughs> wasn't communicating with the owner the correct The owner didn't say much. So, he did. no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, but realistically, guys, I mean, that's what we got going on. A lot of projects yeah. still happen in the nice weather this week. Um, we have a lot of concrete going in this week because of the nicer weather. Yeah. Um, <coughs> one side note, um, we talked about incentive zoning. There's also, I don't know if you all got a copy of the incentive zoning comments coming back for the housing, the townhouses at Bertenzi and Colette. Um, that one went out to staff for comments on the incentive zoning request. They want to do this and that. It's pretty much what we saw before. And uh, my comments back to the town supervisor was, if I was on the town board, I would not want single width driveways. I would want double width driveways with these single car garages because if they're going to dedicate the roads to the town, you're not going to have, you're going to have people parking on the side of the road all winter long just because there isn't enough pretty parking there. No matter how deep those driveways are, nobody wants to park nose to tail and then have to back two or three cars out to get the first person's car. I don't want to do that. So uh, we'll see what the town does with that. Uh, I think we should make comments again if we feel that strongly as I do about it to the town board when we get the incentive zoning package from the town. But, and that's what I was just going to say. So the yeah, we'll get a change. We'll, you'll have your opportunity. Yeah. But the guys you want to make comments beforehand always are wrong. And my comments were two. One of them was the driveway with doubles instead of singles. The other one was making sure that all of the townhouses were as far back as possible and they just didn't line them up with the closest <laughs> one type of thing because that just makes those driveways even shorter and just exasperates the problem. And <coughs> whoever the highway department will be Theoretically, towing vehicles all winter long to get them out of there. So. Okay, that's all I had. I'm sorry. That was just my passion. Yep, Peel on that one. I'm good. I'll let Don get some. Don. Okay, go ahead. Quick question. So, instead of zoning, so BME, 
they weren't meeting the requirements of their district, of their mm -hmm. zoning. Is that why they come to you with incentive zoning? Hey, we we want these lots this small so we can have someone in. Maybe yeah, incentive yeah. zoning will give you something in return. Yes. Town board does incentive zoning. <laughs> incentive zoning means we are going to change the zoning in that area in exchange for these amenities. It's the same as what's going on in front of tops. Um, same as going on in, with when on Hickory Rise. I'm sorry, Hickory Rise was incentive zoning as well as uh, <coughs> um, Hathaway Corner. Pretty much most of the big ones, other than the B and B one across from uh, McDonald's, there um, have most of them have been incentive zoning. They could go for a rezone though, too, couldn't they? I mean, again, that goes to the town board, but. Right, but much I mean, harder because it becomes spot zoning if the town doesn't look at the bigger picture. So instead of zoning, I hot a lot easier than rezoning because of the concept of spot zoning, which is not theoretically authorized. Okay. So the BME would stay in San zoning. Possibly. I mean we it depends on what the town board wants to do, really. If they go for it. The they, town board will change it too. I mean, it doesn't usually come in and I mean, stay the same. I mean, yeah, man, they hit. No. Hathaway um, Corner. Hathaway Corner came in with one density and ended up with less density. Not a whole lot, but some less density in some areas. Mm -hmm. So it changes, it'll morph a little bit depending on the amount. A lot depends on the amenities. Yeah. What are they giving the town? Those what does the town want? Those have to outweigh the change. Right. That's what the town board has to look at. Right. Does what the, what the town is receiving benefit the whole community to change the zone? And there's public hearings and there's all of those types of things. But that's a perfect example off in the corner like that. You don't see hardly any public any public concerns with that one for incentive zoning, just because of its location. There are I mean I don't Mertensi. I mean it's, no no well it, the Mertensi one maybe but the one over here on uh, ninety six I don't see much public input on that one at all personally. So, yeah. Huh? yeah really <laughs> yeah you really think that I don't I don't I, the general public is going to say yeah it's down over there. Was it going back up to your neighbors and everybody in the yeah, It's a little bit farther down. I don't know. There's no. There's it's actually one. There's one lot in between. Between. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ours is lot in between. Is there? And yeah. It goes it's on the other side. Yes. Yep. There's three of them there. So it goes shooting all yep. the way down. There's three of them there. The one closest to us isn't there. Is isn't being included. All right. Well, I thought it was backing up to your neighbors. I, like, I did too. No. I'm like, dude, I don't know how you can say that right now. It's not his neighbors thinking about it. Look at it long term. If the board does do the other two, the third one, how long before that third, third one, one falls? Yeah, depends on how long the power the power family. family. Right, depends <laughs> if they want it in their backyard. <laughs> exactly. But I thought it was back there. I'm sorry. No, so not, I thought so first too. Yeah. Will that have? And I know it's all who knows, but is that going to have another road on to collect too? If they no, they would all enter and exit on the 96. At, at the moment, that's what the proposal is. Okay. Two, <laughs> two entrances off of 96. Oh, but so that's, that's, another thing the the hills. Town, that's another thing the town said. Yeah, we would like to see either another entrance on the county road eight or on to collect. Do you need another? Something, but they were the, well, developer, the, really, the developer was very adamant that they couldn't go out to collect. There is an option. This is a railroad track. Well, it's all wet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but there is some options to go out to County Road Eight. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a personal <laughs> land. Yeah, there are houses. But there's there's gaps. Okay. There, no, there's no, gaps. No, 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 so, it is, you know, it'll change 
Yeah, just from a highway aspect, uh, two weeks ago, we uh, gained a few more rolls over there in uh, Hathaway Corners. Last night, we gained a couple more, or another one, another couple sections in Auburn Meadows. So uh, our highways continue to grow. Uh, one thing on a serious note, uh, for consideration from you guys as these things move forward and the town board moves forward is the fact that these driveways are keeping cars off the road. It's not just a uh, scenario of uh, winter months with snowplow and such, but when you get these subdivisions and these concentration of houses, you always got kids trying to ride their bikes up and down the streets when they're weaving in and out of parked cars. It comes hazards in that aspect. So that, you know, that is another consideration as we continue to build these larger housing developments. Uh, from the highway, basically we're just catching up on some odds and end things that uh, we have to do. Actually, we follow our g &E around Saturday night, picking up some of the branches that they roll the bits on us. But, uh, and that, that said, we were glad to see them whenever they came out through the roads. Uh, last couple days, and again tomorrow, we are working on some more uh, lights in the parking lots and some of these parks with the uh, additional camera surveillance, both at Pumpkin Hook and Farm Road. And the details in check. All right. Couple of couple of quick things. Go ahead. Um, last week Dan said whatever happened to the no parking signs that we thought we passed the law. <coughs> Did a little research and found out that we had sent the information to the state to post those sections of 332 where the tractor trail is yeah. the park. Uh, they haven't generated a work permit yet. It was back in August. So they're working on that. The other thing I surprised you. <clears throat> the other thing I want to just point out to you is the uh, we we do we will be having a new representative on the Ontario County Planning Board. Gentleman is a landscape architect for Bergman. He's done a lot of projects here in Ontario County. Very familiar with the county. I think he'll be a great asset. Uh, and cool. we can scurry around and get a lot of things happening yesterday. We put that on the agenda so that the board of supervisors think. I have to one of our meetings. We will. You'll like it. He's a nice guy. Cool. This is over in Amber Drive. Yeah. Oh. Right neighborhood. Rough <laughs> neighborhood over there. Fire. We're, we're, we continue. <laughs> we don't have any, any, any we might have some objections, but it doesn't matter what the conditions are, we still have to be there. So. Oh. And it's like <laughs> the weather is dictating. We had that wind storm where we yeah. were around. More wind tomorrow, I guess. A lot of crashes. A lot of people are just, you know, it's holiday season, so they're not paying attention and you know hopefully it doesn't get too much worse but we're busy okay um from I'm my standpoint I'm engineering pardon engineering oh i'm sorry lance um not, not much to update i think town staff covered you pretty well um but just a fyi mrb group has been hired uh by uh livingston county to assist with their uh basically every solar review that comes their way uh, they're forwarding them over to MRB Group for review, uh, basically a cursory review, um, and then battery storage and solar laws. So the benefit here is that we're going to have an opportunity to see a lot of what's coming forward, uh, take on new information, and then pass that new information along uh, to other communities that we work with. Uh, so I think it's an asset going forward, uh, regardless if we have a lot of solar or not. Uh, also, we are working with UCs, that's United Solar Energy Supporters. So out of this came an opportunity to do a presentation uh, for this group. Uh, we're not persuading one way or another um, in terms of whether we're in support or not, but it is an opportunity to talk <laughs> about um, the special use permit, permit process, which at this point, most communities are requiring for solar laws or excuse me, for solar energy use. Um, and we're working with Livingston County and another group on this presentation. It's just essentially walking through the steps of the solar project as it relates to special use permit. And then we're doing a little bit of highlighting county referral 
and the O&M plan or operation and maintenance plan. I believe John had forwarded that information out for informational purposes, but last month when they did this presentation, they had somewhere between 400 and 500 people registered for their classes. So it's an outreach opportunity, opportunity to get more information and essentially pass it along to those that we work with. So I think it's important to hear what some of these new these new options are that are out there. I do know that working with Ron and staff, the solar law that you guys are looking to move forward with has incorporated a lot of that information already. So I think that's a huge try going in the right direction. Cool, thanks. Um, from my standpoint, I continue to attend what meetings that the staff feel that they want me to attend um, to try to give them some feedback on where I think the board might go, but I always preface that that I'm only one member and certainly if they want to come in and try to do what they want to do, certainly, uh, you know, they have more the power to do that, but I think I have been around long enough to have some idea, I think, where the board stands on both heads. So we go from there. So that's about it. Does the board have anything else they want to talk about? Staff, anybody else? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Motion yes. to the board. No, I'm sorry. We got, go ahead. I'm, I'm waiting. You talked about most of it already. I was shocked. So, yeah. Is this a Christmas gift? Or... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to make sure. I had a car wash down. It came up. You know, Myers was on there. I mean, okay. I just made I see sure. GLM's taking the mulch out of there. Yeah, it's being taken out. out of there here in the dark in the rain and there's some mud and crap all over the road from the truck. So that's where I state road, right? That, that's what I am not worried about it. State road. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want the pile going or do you want the road clean? Yeah, pile uh, going. Well, no, I'm glad it's going. All right. Motion right. adjourned by Adrian, seconded by Doug. Any other comments? All in favor of saying aye. 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 All right.